Good day to everyone joining us and welcome to today's X Talks webinar. Today's talk is entitled Mono PE Laminate's Role in the Creation of a Circular Economy for Flexible Packaging. My name is Ryan Muse and I'll be your X Talks host for today. Today's webinar will run for approximately 60 minutes and this presentation includes a Q&A session with our speakers. Now the webinar is designed to be interactive and webinars work best when you're involved. So please feel free to submit your questions and comments for our speakers throughout the presentation using the questions chat box and we'll try to attend to your questions during the Q&A session. This chat box is located in the control panel which is on the right hand side of your screen and if you require any assistance along the way please contact me at any time by sending a message using this same chat panel. At this time know that all participants are in listen only mode and please note that the event will be recorded and made available for streaming on xtalks.com. Now at this point I'd like to thank Constancia Flexibles who developed the content for this presentation. Constancia Flexibles is one of the world's leading manufacturers of flexible packaging. The group supplies its products to numerous multinational corporations and local market leaders in the food, pet food, home and personal care, and pharmaceutical industries. In recent years, the group has developed from a supplier with a strong European regional focus into a group which is active on a global basis in the world's most attractive and fastest growing markets for flexible packaging. Constancia Flexibles stands for premium positioning, leading technology, customer proximity, and highly efficient production facilities. Now I would like to introduce our speakers for today's event. Vincent Moy, Director of Suez CircPAC, Professor Achim Greffenstein, Senior Vice President, Group R&D, Constancia Flexibles, Graham Holder, CFlex Project Coordinator and Managing Director of Sloop Consulting, Herwin Schulk, Vice President, Ecolam Consumer, Constancia Flexibles, and Thomas Schulz, Vice President, Group Marketing and Communication, Constancia Flexibles. And so now, without further ado, I'll hand the mic over to our first speaker, Thomas Schulz. You may begin when you're ready. Perfect. Thank you very much. So, um, a warm welcome also from my side. Today, um, the agenda of the webinar is the following. We will start by why film packaging adds value to food, pet food, and home and personal care products. We will also talk about how the application of machine direction orientation, MDO technology, has made it possible for PE to deliver high barrier protection for food and home care products. We'll talk about the key advantages of mono PE in comparison to other recyclable solutions, and also how PE laminate matches the criteria for recycling being an optimal polymer for flexible consumer packaging. Furthermore, how can consumer packaging stop being part of the world's plastic waste problem and become part of the solution? And also, what innovative and more eco-friendly flexible packaging materials there are available on the market and can add value to your brands? So without further ado, I will hand over to our first external guest speaker, um, Graham Holder, CE Flex Project Coordinator, who will talk about um, the introduction or who will introduce to us CE Flex and the circular economy for flexible packaging. Graham, stage is yours. Thank you very much, Thomas, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, open this amazing event uh, today. Uh, if we could uh, move on to the next slide, I will just talk about why we need materials like flexible packaging to go circular. It can't have uh, uh, um, missed anybody's attention that plastic packaging is quite often in the uh, press for the wrong reasons. On top of that, we only have finite resources on this planet and uh, the, the uh, better we use them, uh, uh, the better it is for everyone. Um, so in CFLEX, uh, which happens to have the, the same sounding name as, uh, as the host today, uh, we uh, have this vision for what we call our mission circular. We want to collect all flexible packaging with uh, over 80% of the materials entering a recycling process uh, to be returned to the economy where they're used by sustainable end markets and where they substitute virgin materials. On the next slide, you can see uh, who CFLEX is. It's a cross-value chain uh, collaboration. We started back in 2016 and today we uh, have an amazing 180 stakeholders participating from all parts of the value chain. Uh, and next slide please. The, um, uh, these stakeholders have collaborated to, uh, to 
identify this, what we call our roadmap. It's five simple steps to realizing the circular economy. You have to collect it, you have to sort and recycle it, you have to redesign the bits that don't necessarily fit with the uh, recycling infrastructure that's available. Uh, and if we, if we can't redesign it because the, the product needs that, uh, that, that uh, protection, then we need to identify solutions and develop the capabilities to uh, recycle the remaining fractions. In parallel with all of those steps, it's important that we de develop end markets who can use these materials. Next slide, please. Um, so today we're going to talk about design and, and mono materials and the importance of those. But the circular economy isn't only about design. There are three other, two other uh, vital pillars that are needed to make the economy uh, work, uh, both circularly and sustainably. These are, you need the infrastructure and systems to uh, be able to collect, sort and recycle the materials. And you need to recognize that uh, that production chain for new recycled materials has very different drivers to the, the virgin uh, material drivers. Uh, so uh, we need to make sure that uh, if we want to produce all this recycled, that it is, uh, it's possible to, to use it and it's attractive to use it economically for the people wanting to use it. So we need a sustainable business case. All of those uh, elements come together in, the, uh, uh, in an EPR system, which helps fund and uh, control uh, the, uh, the systems so that they all work in harmony with each other. Next slide. The uh, CFLEX has been focused on uh, consumer household flexible packaging. But as we get more into the circular economy, we realize that it's not only about this small part of the market. We are going to have to design the circular economy for the commercial and industrial flexible packaging, and also for non-packaging uh, films like agri-films and things like that, including production scrap. Next slide. It's very important that uh, where we can, we use monomaterial solutions. These are simply a lot easier to recycle uh, and uh, uh, cheaper to recycle. Uh, and so the more of them we have in the system, the more efficient those, uh, uh, those, those uh, systems are. So CFLEX has brought out a position uh, to support our design guidelines, our design for circular economy guidelines, uh, which is uh, uh, recognizing that we have a clear preference for, uh, for, for monomaterial uh, flexible packaging and there you see the hierarchy uh, and the and the reasons for it. Next slide. So in CFLEX we've taken those design guidelines and uh, looked at how we can get the very best possible quality from the uh, returned materials uh, and we've separated them into two streams, natural and a, 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 a mixed uh, uh, colors PE stream and seeing uh, what materials we can actually get out of them and the applications that uh, they can they can service. And the, we, there's a significant increase in the uh, the number of end markets that uh, uh, we can service with the, the really good quality materials without compromising the uh, markets that are currently serviced by the, the have, or less demanding with the uh, uh, drop streams that you see here. Next slide, please. And uh, just to finalize, uh, I think a bit of a wake up call to everybody who's on this uh, CFLEX journey. And that's about uh, the fact that the clock is ticking. Uh, if we want to meet our 2025 deadline, uh, which is uh, when we want to have realized the circular economy, we need really to have all the, all the pieces of the puzzle in place by the end of 2021. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you very much, Graham. And um... Let's look into the next topic that we have here on today. And this will be an interesting discussion between Vincent Moy, who is the director of Suez CERCPAC, and Professor Ahin Grafenstein, our R&D um, Group uh, Senior Vice President of Constantia Flexibles. So, gentlemen, tell us, why is PE the most wanted flexible packaging material in a circular economy? Well, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, uh, PE is indeed one of the most sorted and reprocessed materials at the moment. So that's uh, definitely one of the things why it's so popular. And we'll, we'll, we'll uh, see some more on that later in the slides. Um, let me shortly introduce myself and the company I work for. So I, I work for uh, Suez, uh, one of the largest waste and recycling companies in the world. 
Um, so we collect a lot of waste throughout the world. We're active in 70 countries uh, and we collect material at households and also at businesses. Uh, and we have already in Europe, I think, over 20 sorting facilities for packaging waste. Um, but we also reprocess uh, uh, plastics, uh, mainly coming from packaging waste. Uh, so we have uh, a joint venture together with uh, with Lionel Bazel, uh, where we reprocess HDPE and PP. We have both food grade and non-food grade PET recycling or reprocessing. Uh, and we also do a lot of uh, LDPE, mainly post-industrial uh, reprocessing at the moment. Um, my job is within Sewer CircPack. I'm the director of Sewer CircPack, and we are an independent consultancy department within Suez. Uh, so we basically support brand owners, retailers, and packaging companies uh, when they're looking for more recyclable and circular packaging. So we provide five basic services, master classes where we explain everything there is about recycling and legislation, new technologies, etc. cetera. Uh, but we also can give dedicated packaging advice uh, based on your own packaging. We uh, do certification of recyclability. We're one of the accredited uh, certifying bodies of RESI class for all plastic packaging, and we have our own methodology for other materials. We have collected a lot of big data on recycling. So for each packaging, we know where it goes in the sorting facility. And we have information about 68 countries at the moment about the local situation for packaging waste. Now, Achim will go and tell us a bit more about the roadmap that uh, Constantia has made with the flexibles. Yeah, thank you, Vincent. Yeah, of course, uh, Constantia Flexibles is working already uh, since a couple of years on that topic, and it started all back in the year 2014 with some uh, first basic R&D activities. When the new MDO stretching technology came up, we have started to look at it as a potential pet replacement. The whole activity then uh, uh, got a lot of pace when uh, in India the plan started to ban completely multi-material laminates and then subsequently first customer projects in India started, not in good old Europe. And um, based on that, we have developed the technology. You all know India is a very cost competitive uh, uh, area of the world. Um, and we have developed uh, an MDO film with integrated barrier, which is for us here, uh, our main workhouse in our uh, mono PE structures. In the same year, 2017, also the first commercial applications of mono PE laminates with a gravier printable polyethylene outer layer. Uh, so that means no compromise in your usual printing quality has to be made, was introduced in the Indian market. In 2018 then, our board decided to invest in a dedicated plant, which you can see here right below in the chart. Uh, in India, this plant is designed with all assets to produce these mono material laminates. The plant was then inaugurated um, as a greenfield project in end of 2019. And of course, also the first commercial application for the high barrier uh, laminates uh, took place. And in the meantime, our marketing activities are ongoing globally. And with many of you here on the call, we have also projects ongoing. An important milestone in 19 was also the approval by RISI class. You will hear later on more on that. Our Ecolam was here the first, um, the first mono uh, PE barrier laminate being uh, uh, approved by RISI class and is so far also the only one with such a high barrier. And in the meantime, we have uh, also uh, started in Europe a production of oriented PE films. So our clear plan is to make those films available on a global base later on by Gervin, more on that. However, Constantia is not just focusing on mono PE. We are working also in applications where you need higher temperature resistance for total packaging and other applications with mono PP laminates. One example is also the product Perpetua Hybrid in our pharma division. Nevertheless, for us, mono PE is the major uh, workhorse for our main packaging applications and uh, Vincent can give you more background why we also believe that this is good for the recycling industry. Yeah, absolutely. And and when you look at um, the flexibles, 
uh, recycling of flexible plastic packaging, then we typically see that most of it is done at the moment uh, on, on PE-based uh, films, so mono-PE. Uh, and that's why the recycling industry loves mono-PE films. Um, of course, they also like rigid plastic. Uh, don't forget about that. But, but when you're working with uh, flexibles, then really mono-PE is the way to go. And uh, obviously, recyclable, recyclability uh, or recyclable packaging uh, always contains these four steps. So the material needs to be collected, it needs to be sortable, and then you should be able to reprocess it and there should be an application. Well, looking at these, you see that collection is getting more and more standard and more and more common in the EU with all the new uh, uh, recycling targets uh, um, that are set up. So already in Western Europe, you see that, uh, that there is, uh, is a good collection of, uh, of flexibles um, and uh, this will definitely continue to grow throughout the EU. Uh, sorting plants also typically sort PE films uh, and they, they, those are sent to uh, PE reprocessors which are in place. So that's a big difference with, uh, with other materials where uh, multi-laminates where there is no uh, uh, good re reprocessing quality and also the sorting is lacking. Um, so finally you can go back to a nice application when you have a mono PE film. So all these four criteria are in place and we'll see on the next slide that is also is in line with um, the infrastructure that has been set up throughout Europe where um, of course there's still a lot of PET recycling 30 percent of the installed capacity for reprocessing is on PET uh, also on on the rigids for HDPE and PP it's another 20 percent and then we go uh, into the the biggest other part, which is LDPE. So 29% or almost 30% uh, of the installed reprocessing capacity is for flexibles. Um, so that is really the only way to go. There is no uh, install base for PP uh, um, flexibles, uh, or at least not high purity recycling of those. If there are multi-laminate materials, they might end up in the mixed plastics. That's only 6% of the installed capacity, but when you really want to go for the high quality, then you have to go with LDPE. Back to you, Achim. Yeah, thank you, Vincent. Yeah, when we started our journey on the mono-PE laminates, we have uh, had a look on uh, what is uh, possible with different polymers. And uh, indeed, our industry has optimized the good old PET-PE or PET-ALU-PE, pet mat pet pe PET structures for decades. They are lightweight, they are, have a re really good performance, no question. And you see here, if we look to the performance criteria here on the left uh, column, uh, it is Polyester is the stiffest material, is also uh, very transparent and, uh, uh, and heat resistant, which is good for sealing on your packaging machines. But the recycling is really a no-go. Even chemical recycling cannot handle pollutions with polyester. And I know a little bit what I'm talking. Uh, in my PhD time, we have studied here in the University in Aachen also for the German environmental ministerial in the 90s, chemical recycling and polyester and many other polymers are disruptors, even in chemical recycling, making it less e efficient. Not, not to talk about mechanical recycling, where it's an absolute no-go and polluter. When we look to the closest alternative, yeah, just replace the PET with the BOPP. We have heard from Graham that this is also, in terms of recycling, maybe, oh, please go, go upwards, Thomas, not so, so fast. I'm an old man in the meantime. Huh? Um, yeah, so uh, you, uh, you see that the, the BOPP is in some aspects a little bit inferior, but is from the performance close to polyester, but the recycling is also not perfect with these mixtures. Uh, and monomaterials like here, the full PP structure or full PE are the preferred. And in terms of recycling, you also saw the advantages for PE, but we have seen that at that time, the uh, oriented PE films on the outer side of such structures, they are not stiff enough to be graver printed. Also, the barrier was lacking. Uh, if you look at all these nice Siox and Alox coated polyester grades, all that doesn't exist here in the PE world. But of course, polyethylene 
is the best performing sealant with a very broad variety of seal properties. Might it be frangible seal, might it be peelable seal, lock seal in different uh, seal strengths. So we had obviously to develop and improve the oriented PE film. What has to be done is shown in the next slide. Um, so the challenges have been, first of all, to create a thin and 20 micron, like for BBP was our uh, target, to create a stable orientation process with only 20 micron film. The film must be transparent, having high stiffness, and very important to make the film running well with a broad ceiling window uh, on your packaging lines. We need also a more heat stable outermost layer of the printable web. For cost reasons, barrier lacquers, they might even pose a risk in recycling, which in many cases has not yet been studied, but it was important to work with a compatible barrier material. We chosen EVH here for the higher barrier versions. And also we added either metallization or allox. Uh, the metallization is a ready product. On allox we are working, we have some intermediate steps, not yet achieving the excellent barrier of metallization, which is as good as aluminum. Also the planarity and thickness profile in that process have been important and so that we could achieve in a close cooperation with the machinery manufacturers. And last but not least, the right inks and adhesive have to be identified that do not hinder the recycling by uh, degradation during the recycling process. Uh, and of course, the solution should be also capable to be either adhesive or extrusion laminated. To make it short, as you can see in the last sentence here, in principle, we have cre created like VW with the cars, a modular system with a few building blocks. And based on this, uh, variation of building blocks, we can tailor-made and customize the laminate for your individual needs on the packaging line. And you can see here some examples are right below, but Gervin will further outline that. Where are we today? Today we are here, as you can see, concerning stiffness and barrier. We are uh, at the same level than the BOPP uh, uh, barrier films but we have here the better sealability of the PE sealants compared to CPP, which uh, allows us to go in almost all applications you can imagine, except uh, retortable, for example. Yeah. And of course, also the heat resistance of the outer web is at least as good as with the BOPP as outer surface. Yeah, um, coming back to recycling. I say to you in the next slide, you can see that our journey started in India and recycling structure infrastructure is not always as sophisticated as uh, it is in Europe. And uh, um, so therefore we have made together with the Indian State Institute CPAT studies to look on let's say simpler equipment, not the best extrusion line, and you will find a lot of these lines in the emerging countries and in the development countries. Uh, the plastic will only disappear, and that we have learned from our Indian colleagues, if people and the waste pickers see the value and collect it. And for example, in India, we have rapidly learned waste pickers collecting PE, but not any other flexible material. So that was the first input. The second was we have made tests we have created barrier laminates of mono-PE, mixed polyolefins, and here below in the lower column also mono-PE laminates and recycled them not once, not twice, not three times, up to 10 times we have recycled them. And then we have seen something and an effect which you can also see uh, many documents in the scientific literature. Um, there is a difference between PE and PP in being exposed to heat during recycling. PE has a certain tendency to cross-link, means jail formation is a typical phenomenon, but the mechanical properties stay on a very high level. BOPP on the other side, and this affects the resin guys our suppliers are using also uh, to tailor made the molecular weight, it degrades um, um, during the recycling. And this degradation you can see here on that slide on the left side, if your extruder is not doing a perfect degassing, you see here that even after the first cycle, the granules, they have some volatiles and 
Um, and this degradation of PP is even catalyzed or can be catalyzed according to the scientific literature. And we, we will do also further studies on that, but the first studies here have shown that effect that there might be an oxidation effect. PE is also processed at lower temperatures usually. So therefore inks, adhesives and EVH, uh, which have only a limited thermal stability during recycling, they degrade also less when the material is reprocessed at lower temperatures and a PE blown film is typically extruded at 200, 200 to 220 degrees and polypropylene cast is at 250 to 270. Yeah, so that, but please go, don't go back with the message that PP is not recyclable. You can see in the next slide, we have also years ago started to check what we can do with our mono PP scrap. Also, uh, Constanza is producing chocolate wrappers, crisp bags, and the stuff where typically mono PP metallized is used. And the good message is yes, with modern equipment, also that can be recycled. Uh, and you can see here below some films and granules we have produced. However, and that is a challenge also mentioned by Vincent for the recycling industry, there is no outlet market existing. And the sad truth today is we are still today in the situation that we have to co-incinerate uh, our PP production scrap together with the PET PE. With mono PE, we will definitely change that as you can see in the next slides. Thank you. Yeah. So um, what we have done um, for uh, the Ecolam family is that we uh, were asked to do uh, an assessment based on the Reciclas protocol uh, and really test if uh, packaging made with Ecolam, uh, Ecolam High and Ecolam High Plus uh, could be sorted and reprocessed. Um, this is what we have done. So of course, this is not a final packaging as you will find in, in the stores, but it's pretty close to it because uh, it, it actually contains a full print uh, and uh, uh, is, is very much similar to what we will have for any brand owner. Um, and we have found that this material, all three versions, even the metallized one, uh, can be easily sorted by uh, with infrared. So they can be sorted into the correct uh, material stream and uh, uh, looking at the uh, the combination of materials that are being used, uh, the barrier materials, etc. cetera, um, we have been able to state that, there, uh, that this material uh, is compatible with the Reciclas protocol. Um, so that's very good. And, and this was done after that, we, there were, had already been an evaluation uh, on the technical reprocessability. So really in a laboratory, but Achim will tell a bit more about that. Yeah, thank you, Vincent. What's, what is Reciclast usually doing in the frame of the polyethylene protocol is shown in the next slide. And in the meantime, also uh, um, uh, a, a comparable protocol the first time has been installed for mono PP and uh, also there more findings will come in the next time what components are compatible with PP recycling. But with PE, the technical uh, committee and the community being there and many of you are also involved there, uh, several brand owners are members of the RISI class team. Uh, they know that different inks, adhesives, et cetera, have been tested. It has been tested how much EVH is affordable and, and, and. And um, yeah, the protocol is after sorting has been checked, is checking if uh, the granulation, the regranulation and a new film blowing is possible. And what is done here? So uh, the granules are grinded, washed, flotation test is done, etc. And then the resulting flakes of the uh, shredded material, um, a control film is taken, means a classical non-printed uh, PE film or PE granules is a control. And they, these are then blended with, in different let down ratios, with the innovation material, means the material to be tested. Then pellets are uh, extruded and these pellets, again, in different let down ratios, are blended with virgin pellets to produce new blown films in 25 micron, which is for the blown film industry, 
um, uh, one of the thinner specifications, usual lamination films are thicker and easier to extrude, but if you look at, for example, garbage bags are a typical outlet for LDPE regranulates, and you do not want in your private household that the garbage bag is, is breaking, uh, then this is, of course, an important test. And the outcome with our product, and this was a fully printed product, it was fully metallized, it contained some EVOH, so that means we have sent, let's say, our, our Mercedes in the product portfolio in the race, which has even a barrier that can replace polyester aluminum PE. And the result, what we have found, you see in the next slide. Um, so, blown film production was possible. You can see the only remark uh, the recyclers had, of course, due to the printing inks, but in that case also uh, a slight grazing effect would be also the effect of a metallization. Um, will not lead to transparent regranulates, as you can see in the upper pictures. In the films, however, it's a translucent greenish uh, film, and the important point is that Mechanics have been okay, the mechanical properties have been at least as good as virgin LDPE, since we use also a lot of high performance metallocene grades uh, to create the sealability. Uh, and uh, everything was checked okay. But of course, as Vincent has mentioned, uh, that does not mean that an individual pack is uh, uh, passing the test. If the package contains the wrong fitments, the wrong additivations, or also the wrong filling good means too sticky food stuff. Also that has to be tested on a final pack. Uh, the emptying performance of a pack has to be tested. And after that, then also the final pack uh, will pass the test. Uh, yeah, last but not least, one last word on how to close the loop, how to close really the cycle uh, here, the circle. And you can see that in my last uh, uh, slide. Uh, what we have done concerning uh, incorporation of recyclates, and if I talk recyclates, I'm talking not uh, chemical recycles. That is, for me as a scientist and uh, an R&D guy, it's a, it's a no-brainer. It's just a commercial topic. If one is willing to absorb the higher energy consumption of chemical recycling and resulting cost. But we have proven that we can use a high percentage of recycled LDPE in the sealant layer of new Ecolam. However, ideally, since transparent post-consumer recyclates are rare and expensive on the market, you can increase your chances to get a, a, a good, also cost-competitive recyclate in your product uh, if you might accept some visible jail spots or we have always to accept with mechanical recycling some jail spots, more or less, depending on price and quality. And of course, if the inner pack is not as today a metallized surface or a white surface, it could be also gray. Yeah? Uh, and remember back the older of us, and remember in our school, the recycling paper was also grayish. So why not the packaging at least until the recycling industry and everybody has developed good the inking technologies. However, with closing the circle, we have one limitation today and the lower packaging, which we have created together with some uh, other value chain members under the umbrella of CFLEX here is showing that uh, that's a typical non-food application, for example, for dishwasher uh, uh, powder, etc. Here we can offer that option today with mechanical recycling. However, the many uh, food manufacturers here in that call, they have today only the option to go for chemical recycling that we can offer. It's technically completely safe. It's only a price discussion here in that and availability maybe, at least today until more investments come on stream. But I can tell you if I look and I have a hobby job, I'm teaching the subject plastic recycling since 30 years in University of Aachen, and I can tell you there are many really interesting recycling technologies on the horizon. And uh, I would not exclude, and if you discuss with uh, many companies, you will see that it, there might be also in future the chance to create mechanical recyclates with food approval together with clever sorting to sort out the food grade from the non-food grades and uh, having better cleaning processes like uh, Graham has shown it, that might be possible. So that means we really 
can and want to close the loop and recycling Ecolam Mono PE back film to film. And we start, of course, first of all, with our own production scrap. Yeah, thanks for your attention. Thank and you. then we go to the last, last speaker. Perfect. Thank you very much, Achim. Thank you very much, Vincent, for those very interesting insights. And um, I want to get a bit interactive here with you. And Ryan, please help me on this. We have prepared a poll. Yes, so there's a poll question for audience members that's appearing on all of your screens right now. You can interact with this in real time by clicking on either of the answers you see in front of you and then clicking submit. And the question that we have for you is, what material can be recycled more often? Your answer options are paper or plastic. We appreciate you taking a moment to uh, consider this question, to participate. And uh, the question again being, what material can be recycled more often? Sure, we're going to hear a lot more on this topic as we move forward in this wonderful presentation. We'll give this just a few more seconds to stay up for you all to uh, take a moment to consider your answer and then submit. It looks like most of you, though, have submitted a vote. So thank you very much for your participation. Let's take a look at the results. Coming in at 63% for plastic and 37% for paper. Interesting, thank you, and it's back to you, Thomas. Thank you, indeed, very interesting, Ryan. And um, what is the correct answer? Well, the correct answer is actually paper and plastic, or plastic can be at least as often recycled as paper. And we are talking here about a range of five to up to seven times. That's how often plastic can be recycled. So um, here at Constancia, we took um, the whole story to what we call our ecolutions. And you've heard about that a bit before from, from Achim, that ecolutions is what we have designed and um, invented, um, invented basically to create materials that are more planet friendly and all doing so in order to package responsibly. So um, what I want to show you um, is actually now today deep diving on film and We've done so on paper also in a previous webinar, which you can um, check out today looking at film, is where actually that film comes from, where do we produce it? And um, I'll show you now in a second a video of an inside view of our facility, the EcoFlex factory in Ahmedabad in India, and it takes you right in how it works. Ryan, please play the video. passion packaging, a commitment to you as well as a commitment to a healthy environment which is so essential for our survival as human beings on this planet. Plastic high barrier packaging has been optimized by our industry for decades concerning their resource efficiency. That means we have made the packaging thinner and thinner and recycling was not in the focus. That has changed with our new Ecolum family, which we are producing in this factory here and which is perfectly recyclable without compromising the properties. We will have 100% of the packaging we produce for the pharma and consumer industry recyclable by 2025. Thank you very much, Ryan. So, as you have seen, that the story has just begun. 
And now I will hand over to Gavin, our VP Ecolam consumer, who will show us a few practical examples of, uh, of how we took those mono PE laminates for flexible packaging. Gavin. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, we now have arrived at the last uh, section of this webinar, and I'd like to introduce uh, the portfolio of mono PE laminates and some of the practical examples, how we are moving, let's say, customers uh, from non-recyclable to recyclable specification. But before doing so, you have been hearing already from the previous speaker and some of the slides that we're using the word Ecolam. So what, what is Ecolam about? Ecolam is the brand name uh, for mono PE laminates uh, developed by the R&D team of Constanza Flexibles. So what is unique and what is the novelty here? It is the barrier that we are achieving, but also in the way we are achieving that barrier. So it's a combination of resin, processing, enabling to produce a 20 thin micron PE film, which is at the backbone of our portfolio. So what are we doing? We are taking the PE polymer to the next level, beyond what, what, beyond what traditionally was uh, possible with PE, through the process of orientation using MDO uh, technology, as explained already by Achim. And by selecting specific resins and through the orientation process, we are creating stiffness. But that's not enough. We also need uh, to take care on the heat resistance uh, on the outer layer of the 20 micron film. And also on the optical pro properties to make sure that we have a similar feel and touch like on the current packaging that is very important to the brand owner and the consumer. But just having uh, optical properties and uh, mechanical properties um, plus the thermal resistance is not enough. Uh, we also uh, need to incorporate barrier to make sure that um, uh, the product can reach its shelf life and maintain its shelf life. And finally, as we are moving away uh, from polyester films, for instance, on the current uh, packaging, which is traditionally found on the outside of the packaging, um, which, which has a high uh, thermal resistance, we also need to do uh, certain things on the on the sealant webs, uh, introducing uh, special resins to lower the seal initiation uh, temperature. Uh, this in order to create an operational window uh, for the packaging lines. So we now have our base film in 20 micron without and without and with barrier, and to the in and to increase the barrier even more, we can metallize the film. Uh, in the coating process. And I think, Thomas, you are a bit too far away. You need to go back to the slide, first slide. Yeah, thank you. So, as I was saying, so we have now our base film of 20 micron without and with barrier. And to increase the barrier even more, we can metallize the film in the coating process. And here we are leading the way with a, with a technology provider to make sure that we can handle these new polyethylene films. And important here is to take care on uh, a, a number of aspects. That is the heat sensitivity of the PE film in the metallizer, uh, the tension control because of the extensibility of the film, but also the treatment of the film to make sure that we have a good bonding overall in the laminate. So, what we end up with is a combination of resin and processing is creating high barrier raw material films plus the sealant webs that end up finally in our conversion plants to make the final mono PE laminate with our existing technology in printing and lamination. And printing can be gravure, flexo, and for the lamination, it can be solvent-based, solventless, or extrusion lamination, or a combination of the three. But this is not where it ends, uh, actually. We still have uh, the brand owner's packaging operation that also have to adjust to these new materials. And as we know, this is an enormous challenge for our industry, and therefore we are working across the value chain with many partners to make uh, make this happen, including machine manufacturers, to make sure that uh, we uh, reach our uh, joint commitments and pledges. And as Achim and Vincent have told already, there is value in PE for recyclers, and therefore mono PE 
laminates will play its role in the transformation to more sustainable recyclable films. So let's move to the next slide and show you uh, the portfolio, which is broken down in three categories and based on three 20 micron films. One which is without any barrier, the second with a transparent barrier and the third with a high metallized barrier. So looking at this table, there is more to PE than you realize, especially if you zoom in in the middle section where we have uh, oxygen barrier and water vapor barrier. So on the left part, um, which is uh, the first block, Ecolam, um, this is, uh, let's say, the most basic um, laminate that we provide in a duplex form uh, where the water vapor level is smaller than six and you can increase that by adding more sealant layer in thickness. But then if we move to the middle section, we are already incorporating transparent ba barrier uh, where now we also introducing oxygen barrier uh, below two and the water vapor stays at six or if you increase the thickness, uh, you can even reduce that further. Um, and then on the, the most right part, you see the metallized uh, version. Uh, where we are uh, reaching an oxygen transmission rate of uh, 0.05 and a water vapor uh, of 0.2. It's fair to say uh, for Ecolam uh, Plus and High Plus, uh, there is also um, a barrier to uh, um, uh, aroma and also a mineral oil. And if we are looking a little bit more upper part in the table, it says specification. And this would suggest that uh, PE, PE, uh, in duplex or triplex is something like very simple, but the building blocks, uh, how we create uh, the specifications are quite uh, uh, multiple at our, our disposal. That means that uh, there are many variations of different grades to build a final specification. And also when it comes to the lower part of the table, uh, we can incorporate uh, functional um, uh, elements uh, to the packaging in mono PE, just like um, uh, spout, uh, fitments like uh, zippers, um, introducing even an easy tear by uh, the, the, the sealant film itself, or um, introducing laser technology. Uh, so there are many things still possible with mono PE. Even lab sealable uh, versions are available. And if you then move to the next slide, um, Thomas, exactly, um, we find a wide range of products that can be packed uh, either in home and personal care or in the food, uh, across the food uh, aisle, uh, from anything <coughs> low barrier to high barrier and everything in between. But what we would like to say here is that uh, in those cases where the existing specification where PE is dominant, um, in the sealant, uh, we can have a good opportunity to replace uh, these uh, current structures with mono PE laminates. And if we then move again to the next slide, there are some practical examples without disclosing uh, the customer product that we are not allowed to. But if we look on the left side um, and following the logic of before, um, there are some practical examples here from low barrier to high barrier, but starting with the low barrier, on the left we have a polyester that we can take out and replace it with an MDO PE uh, with heat resistant and low SIT PE films. On the next slide, we see another example where barrier already is, a, is a required, where on the upper part we have a nylon reverse printed with PE uh, for a um, meal component in the chilled cabinet and the same is true uh, in the left bottom part where we have polyester reverse printed with a PE barrier um, for a liquid new component. Um, we are replacing that basically with a barrier MDO PE and uh, again with low SIT uh, PE sealant films. And then there is one more slide to go on the high barrier option where we are taking out polyester and foil at the same time um, for a beverage customer in coffee. 
uh, two specifications where typically they are using polyester aluminium PE or polyprop metallized polyester and then PE replaced by the MDO PE with heat resistance on the outside again with the metallized MDO film uh, that we have developed and again low SIT uh, sealant web. And Thomas, if you can move to the next slide, we are showing here basically the geographical map um, whereby we are indicating not uh, really the amount of sites that we have in those areas where we are active, but where we have more the capability of converting um, uh, these materials and where we have the capacity in place in yellow uh, for MDO barrier materials. So over to you, uh, Thomas, um, to close the webinar. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much, Gavin. And also thank you very much to the um, speakers before. So the key takeaway messages that we have just heard in the various parts were basically Graham um, told us very clearly that it is a race against time, but together we can do it. Vincent then says, Mono PE fits designed for recycling. And it does so now and also in the future. Achim talked about basically PE flexibles are the only already established recycling stream for flexible packaging and that the Ecolam product family is perfectly designed to be recycled and even to contain also even its own um, recyclate. Gavin then closed by saying there is more to PE than you realize and I'm sure there are more questions out there. Ryan, can you please guide us through some questions of the audience. Yes, well, thank you very much for that insightful presentation. I'd like to invite the audience to continue sending their questions or comments right now using the questions window for this Q&A portion of the webinar. Now, I've already received some questions, so we will get ourselves started with those. And our very first question uh, would like to know, and this I believe would be directed towards uh, Vincent Moy, uh, how do you identify recyclable, i.e. PE laminates, versus non-recyclable, i.e. traditional laminate pouches? That's a, that's a good question. Uh, obviously, there is, uh, we have the sorting facilities or the MERFs, uh, as they're called in, in the UK, um, where all the packaging materials will go to. Um, and there we have different types of technology in place to separate different materials and, and, and characteristics. Um, one of the things that are done with, with flexibles is the sorting uh, first by ballistics, wind sifters and, and uh, other ballistics uh, technologies uh, to separate them from the rigid plastics. And afterwards, you often see that additional NIR sorters are installed. So these flexibles are then scanned by uh, near infrared uh, and each uh, material, whether it's PE, uh, PP or a combination of PET PE, for instance, they all have an, uh, a unique uh, infrared spectrum um, and that allows us to sort them accordingly. Uh, meaning that we have a, 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 the ability to, to take out all the LDPE or PE uh, materials and flexibles and send them to a dedicated reprocessor. And we can also identify, and it's also quite common for those uh, MERS where they do separation of uh, or sorting of flexibles, uh, they have uh, mixed polyolefins as a dedicated stream and then mixed plastics, which is even a broader term. So uh, the further away you go from the original and the more it becomes a blend, uh, the lower the quality of the recycling can become. So having really a dedicated flow like PE, uh, PE flexibles is the highest possible level of recycling you can, uh, can achieve. Yeah, and some more fine sorting will be done at the reprocessor. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a couple of questions directed toward uh, Herwin Schalk. Our first question would like to know, can PCR PE also be used for the production of PE laminate? So a short answer to that, yes, uh, through the mechanical uh, recyclate, but there we have to watch out for food contact. So, but yes, it's possible, uh, but can be used for home and personal care um, applications, for instance. 
Excellent, thank you. Our next question then would like to know whether PEPE -E laminate provide barrier properties required for wet wipes? Also here the answer is yes, with barrier MDOPE uh, we can achieve that and uh, more than happy to engage uh, with uh, the person that has asked this question uh, after the webinar. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, Achim Griffenstein, we have some questions for yourself. Uh, first one would like to know, how can we make PE laminates more affordable and performing better on production lines? Further, they'd like to know, how can we have uh, enough food grade PE material and include this back into food packaging to close the loop? Okay, these are basically two different questions. First, on the packaging line, it is important, and that was also a challenge in our development, that we give our customers with the MonoP laminates also a broad ceiling window. Since one thing is clear, if you today have more than 200 degrees centigrade on your ceiling bar, uh, which you can apply on polyester, that is not possible with polyethylene. So therefore, our Ecolam products contain a very thin recycling compatible more heat resistant outer layers uh, to assure together with uh, specially, specially designed sealants uh, a broad sealing window means low SIT in the sealant and high temperature resistant of the outer printed web that is here important. The second question was on the food grades um, and uh, food law uh, application as say shortly in the presentation um, today that is only possible with chemical recycled materials since it's physically identical to, uh, uh, to the normal grades we use today. No new technical approval needed for that, but a significant price upcharge will be taken by the resin suppliers without any exceptions, what we know. Um, concerning the mechanical recycling, there are initiatives. If you look to CFLEX activities, a project called Holy Grail, several uh, stakeholders in the value chain working on sorting technologies to sort out food grade uh, uh, material and non-food. If that is done, then we have the first precondition to make also PCR uh, for food available via mechanical, but then you need also additional cleaning steps, which are today not yet established, but I'm quite sure the recycling uh, colleagues are very inno innovative to do that. Thank you. Um, is there a material that you see replacing aluminum foil for butter wraps? Um, <laughs> that's a little bit different question uh, from today, but yes, there is a material, but uh, for butter wraps, uh, 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 we, we like our mono PE, but for butter wraps, it's not Ecolam. It's we are working on either uh, um, uh, recyclable materials, either recyclable in the alu stream or in the paper stream, but also in the plastic stream. All the, all the three options we have on the radar, first products are in the market in the paper stream. Um, yeah, but um, we, have, we have to avoid these laminates of alu and paper, that is clear. Very good, thank you. Um, Achim, then what are the integrated barriers used in MDOPE and what do they do to the processing for recycling? Yeah, we are working with two barriers. Um, we're working on a first instance with EVH as barrier, which is giving good aroma, mineral oil, uh, and also oxygen barrier. And for applications where we really need to replace uh, alufol, uh, then we add in addition uh, a metallization. That is done and, and uh, I've seen also questions uh, what it does with the recycling. Metallization, to stress it again, is not harming the recycling, it's in principle a pigment. And there came the question, yeah, how is, what is the allowed aluminum content in, in mono PE? Yeah, I can tell you it is zero, means no alufol is laminated and many people are mixing that. Uh, we are talking vacuum metallization, which is only 40 nanometer thin metal layer. It, during recycling, simply falls into nanoscale particles, which act like pigments, nothing else. 
Well, wonderful. Thank you very much for that answer and all of you for all of your answers. However, we have reached the end of our time here today. Uh, now, if we couldn't attend to all of the audience questions, the team at Constancia Flexibles uh, will follow up with you after the presentation. And if you have further questions, you can direct them to the contact information that's on your screen. I want to thank everyone for participating in today's webinar. You will be receiving a follow-up email from Xtalks with access to the recorded archive for this event. A survey window will be popping up on your screen as you exit and your participation is appreciated as it will help us to improve our webinars. Now I'm about to send you a link in the chat box and with this link you'll be able to view a recording of this event on this page and you can also share this link with your colleagues when they register of course for the recording here as well. So I do encourage you to do that. Now, please join us in thanking our speakers for sharing their time with us today. We hope that you all found the webinar informative. Have a great day, everyone, and thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.